wet and sticky. It clung to everything. I looked up and it was floating all around me. Specks, no, threads, long and short threads in the sink, on the floor, on the table, on the blades of the scissors and on her hands. It was all over her hands. I'd never normally go out with my mum. It was always my dad I got on with actually, but now he's gone. And it's just me and her. And she keeps trying to do these bonding activities. And they are so cringe. It's like I'm 12. It's just burgers and bowling and beauty salons. I say no to everything. But today, well today shopping. What? I need some new trainers. Anyway, I want these Nike blazers. They're suede and they're so cool. But she keeps holding up these unbranded, no-name, nobody shoes for like half the price and it's already turning into an argument when Dan walks in. Dan is this boy from school. He's older than me. And Chloe, he shouts, he's coming over here. And she's holding up these horrid, bright pink trainers. And Chloe, oi! And then he's there. You're all right. You're with your mum. Dan's laughing then. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Dan is saying, oh, you out shopping with your mum. She's treating her little princess. And then she steps in. Excuse me, young man, who are you? Young man! Dan squares up and says, who's it to you? And then she's off. Don't you dare speak to me like that! Who's your mother? Shut up, Mum! And everyone goes a bit quiet then. The shop assistant's gawping. She's holding her arm like a hitter, but... with any little push. She's always been stroppy. And now she's a teenager. It's worse. I try to do nice things with her, but I'm always getting it wrong. And like most of my ideas with Chloe, this hasn't worked either. And now she's yelling and yelling and, oh, I, 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 I get it, I do. I mean, she's 14, she's into boys and she's embarrassed. But she can't behave like this. She can't. Everyone is going to talk about it at school. No, they won't. Come on. Oh my God, she was so cringe. Young man. Oh, I don't even want to look at you. He's far too old for you anyway. I can go out with whoever I want to. You can't, Chloe. You're 14. I'm not taking love advice from you. I know more about men than you, Chloe. And he's not even a man. He's just a silly little boy. Listen, if he bullies you, just ignore him. That's the worst thing you can do. What? Like you did with Dad? Yeah. Worked out really well for you, didn't it? I didn't think about it at the time. I just wanted her to feel how I felt. I just wanted her to know how angry I was. And it was so easy. Just snip. It's only now I realise how wrong it was. It's only now that I realise I can't take it back. It's parents' evening and I'm getting my battle gear on because I know she's been bunking off and not doing her homework. And as if Chloe wasn't bad enough, I know that tonight I'm going to get that judgmental you're a bad parent look from the teachers as well. I go to get Chloe, but I can hear her through the door. She's on the phone, giggling. Oh, don't. <laughs> I mean, she's supposed to be the mother, you know? At least with Dad, he had some authority. You know, last week she dyed her hair, even though I told her it looked crap. Oh, and she started doing this internet dating thing. Except no one fancies her, because who would? <laughs> no, Dan, honestly, you should have seen her earlier. You 
stumbling around trying to put makeup on, pissed again. At least with Dad, he had some authority. I can't listen anymore. I go in and I grab the phone off her. Get out of my room! Don't look at yourself! I grab hold of it and try to turn it off to stop this, but... You're disgusting! No wonder he hit you! And then I feel it. This impact. And there's ringing and my, my ears burning. I look up and Chloe's gone downstairs and, and I can hear doors banging. I steady myself and I go down. It's getting louder and I can hear glass smashing. And, and then she's there, staring at me. They ask me if Mum had a boyfriend, if he's been round or... This one officer sits down next to me on the bed and says that the neighbours heard banging, crashing that they rang because they were worried about me. About me. The officer says, you know, you can tell us. You don't need to be scared. I can't speak. And I feel so bad then because I know that this is what Dad would do. This is what Dad did to her. And I'm about to tell them when... My boyfriend came round and, and we had a bit of a scrap. <laughs> But I'm not going to press charges. <laughs> Don't waste your time. The officer asks, did he hurt you? They give me their number and they leave. All sad eyes and pity. And I feel so bad then. I cry. I'm so sorry, Mum. I'm so sorry. It's all right, Chloe. It's all right. Things have been better recently. You know, she's uh, doing good at school again, and that's something. I know it's my fault, how she is. I let her dad do things I... She's seen things that she shouldn't have seen, and I let her see them because because I was scared. I've never been a coward. And when she was born, she was everything. I brought her into this world and I will not let her mess up her life. But I'm tired, you know? As long as I leave her be, well, everything's fine. I leave her some dinner in the fridge and oh, I know it's bad, but the wine does help. I go out to these dinner parties and other people, other parents, don't look down on me or disrespect me. And for one evening, I can pretend like my daughter is like their daughter and everything's normal. Then one night, I come home and there's another voice upstairs. And I go up and she's got a boy around. And it's that same boy from the shop before. And he's too old for her. I mean, she's only 14. She's 14. And it's my house. It's my house. Get out! She's screaming. And Dan's gone now. Down the stairs and out of the door. And I can smell it on her. She's drunk. Again. She's never even here. And then she suddenly decides to be my mother. Just suddenly decides to tell me what to do. No. I'm done. And without thinking, I... The steps roll away from under me. One, two, three, four, head first. I try, I try to grab her wrist, but her hand is wrapped round my hair and she's dragging me. I reach for the scissors. <sighs> I take her stupid hair and cut. <sighs> Mum? 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 I keep wondering if I could do it. Yep, really do it. Maybe it comes sooner for some people. Maybe, maybe later. 
breaking point. I don't know. I watch a police officer as he picks up handfuls of my hair from the floor and puts it in a bag. Chloe's not here. She's not here and I need to see her. Where is she? And they just keep saying to me, you're safe now. You're safe now. There was this day when she was five and we were on a family holiday. We were by these rock pools and there were all these little fish swimming about. Well, Chloe was convinced that they were going to get eaten. The big fish in the sea will eat the little fish, she kept saying. So she scooped them up in her hand and she asked me if we could take them home. Well, I had to tell her that she was hurting them and I tried to get her to put them back in the sea, but she just wouldn't believe me. I, I tried to get her to open her hand, but she got so upset. She was screaming and crying and then well, the fish just died in her tiny hands. I told her, put them back in the sea. I told her she'd killed them, but she just ignored me and, and she stroked them like nothing had happened. And she said to them, it's okay fish, you're safe now, you're safe now. They asked me if I want to press charges and I wonder if this is it my breaking point. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> She's my baby.